today we're going to look at temperature. Today there's four types we are going to learn. As you can see there, there will be a bunch of scenarios that Miss Lee has written out here. And at the end, you'll get a chance to decide which thermometer you think best fits the scenario. Yes, because you are selling thermometers, guys. Okay. But before go thermometer, you need to know what temperature is, right? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so let's zoom in on that part on what is temperature, how to think of temperature. Okay, temperature and all these are is physics. If you think English, put the English aside. Okay, what is temperature? Temperature is not heat energy, uh, by the way. It's a misconception. Because you'll say, oh, temperature got heat. No, 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 no. That's English. But Remember hot thing, say, high temperature, uh, no meh. Throw the English away, please. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> throw, so temperature, throw, 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 temperature throw. you need to rethink a bit. What is temperature? This is physics okay, I, now. I have Marie condo my mind. What is temperature? Okay, temperature here is your measure of the amount of average kinetic energy of particles. Funny, why suddenly got particles? Then the air, mm. your, your body is liquid, right? Got particles, right? So let's think about Air la. Okay. There are air particles They are moving around So mm. they have kinetic energy So let's say They have a lot of kinetic energy Means they have more temperature So if they are Moving more energetically They have higher temperature Larger yes. temperature We will learn more about that In the coming video ah, Interesting but For now Just think of temperature As not heat energy But amount of Movement of particles Yeah So the particles are moving Faster and faster When it's hotter and hotter also, there's a second point to this. Temperature also shows the direction of net heat flow between two objects in contact. La. So it's not heat energy, but it shows you where the heat is flowing from high temperature to low temperature, for example. So I don't know, you maybe hold a very cold Pepsi Cola container in your hand. You feel, wow, very cold. That means what? Your body temperature is higher than the Pepsi Cola can. So, mm -hmm. heat flowing from your hand to that Pepsi can. Can ah. <laughs> Net heat, not just heat. Mm, net heat. Means it's... what does net heat mean? What's the difference? Net only ah. Okay, we talk about the net first lah. But I think it's important for us to remember heat is energy ah, guys. It's not the feeling of hotness. Because it's how you perceive it. So, as humans, you know, we tend to think about these kind of physics things as how we perceive them. But you level up, Leola, it's time to study A2. So heat is a form of energy. Mm. And temperature is a measure of the amount of kinetic energy. So they are related, same, somewhat related, but they are not the same thing. They are not identical. So you have to differentiate temperature and heat. If you do pass here, la, you will be able to see how they differentiate them when they write, write out their explanation. Yes, so, don't use English dictionary to find the definition of temperature. Please don't. <laughs> okay, so like what, what Miss Lee said, a form of energy can be transferred between two bodies that is heat. And we will learn more about this thing called internal energy. So you see that heat increases the internal energy of the body. <sighs> what is internal energy? Uh? Okay, la, more chapters, we'll see more about internal energy. Um, but anyway, you increase kinetic energy. So internal energy increases. And so the temperature of the body rises. So they're, they're all linked. But heat and temperature is not the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing we need to know about what temperature is, what is heat. Also, uh, you see number three and number four on the right side there. We also need to know what are some important things before we go into thermometers. What is a fixed point, Miss? You see, uh, sometimes when we want to measure, you know, throw back to chapter one, uh, this is a base SI quantity. And when we start with physics, right, the whole idea is if we cannot measure, we cannot study. So we could study technically temperature, but in order to measure it, there has to be some standard operating procedure, SOP. Like for example, we all know what one meter is. No one is going to argue with you what the length of one meter is. So, so like we, we all know, mm. yeah. So we need to choose a reference point, a reference space. So this reference point is your fixed point. Okay. But are all fixed points the same for every temperature scale? Don't know. Ah, you stay tuned. Lah. Okay. The last idea we need to know is what is thermal equilibrium? 
this one, I think for past year, we'll ask you what is thermal equilibrium. So you might want to put a star there, or oh, this is a definition you should know. So during thermal equilibrium, when you have two regions or two objects touching each other, okay, so we call it thermal contact, they are at the same temperature. Equilibrium now, so no more, no more flow, what, what do you call this? No more flow of heat, everything's in equilibrium. This for temperature, don't think about forces, equilibrium, that's related, but different thing. <laughs> there are no forces going around here. Anyway, also net heat flow is zero, so that kind of, just what it means in different language. So if you draw like two boxes, or I don't know, maybe at first one is hotter, the other one is more cool. Is that in equilibrium? You think about it. One hotter, the other one hot. So where were the heat flow? You can draw some arrows to show where the heat flow. Lo. Heat will flow generally from a hotter place to a colder place. More heat will flow from hot to cold. Less heat will flow from cold to hot. The heat flow is always two-way. Because don't forget, what is heat? Energy, energy. Represented by the kinetic energy. So the vibration is being shared when they touch. It's just that the hotter one is vibrating more. So it will vibrate its friend more. But it doesn't mean that the colder one is not vibrating. But eventually, they reach some form of equilibrium, right? Mm. Oh, so miss, so here you see you draw two arrows, right? So the net flow will be... Not zero. Some direction. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So... And after that, what happened? Assume, I am lazy to do calculation, but assume they end up at the same temperature, somewhere in between 40 and 70, I guess. So this one, uh, the net heat body? flow, not zero. Mm. From hot to cold, net heat flow. Mm. After that, let's say they are both at 60. Closer to 70 a bit, because huh? since it's a bigger... I mean, we are assuming cold. that the specific heat capacities are the same. Lah. Oh, you write 60, 40, miss. Oh, sorry. 60, 60, <laughs> leo, equilibrium. Mm -hmm. mm, now this one? Do you think there'll be any net heat flow? That there, there will be heat flow, mm -hmm. but the net is zero. So, so consider thermal equilibrium now, no? same temperature. Mm. So the idea of thermal equilibrium is just a statement kind of understanding. You probably have already encountered this in your Form 4 IG. Form 5 also got it, I think. I don't know. If you remember, la, but I don't know at this point in time what people remember and what they don't remember. <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to our thermometers. You know yes. temperature, you know what's heat, what is thermal equilibrium. Okay, now we go to thermometers. There are four famous, not famous, la, four thermometers that we will look at today. This is number one. Do you recognize it? Please say you recognize it. So there are ways we measure temperature. One of the ways is this good old mercury or other thing, whatever inside the bulb there, you see this one red color, maybe this one is some alcohol, I don't know what is it. If mercury inside is silver color one. Mm. So how do they measure the temperature with this? Ah? What's the physical property that they change? So the physical property that changes with temperature, we call this the thermometric property. So a property that changes with temperature. So what's the physical property? What happens when you heat up? Or rather, what happens to the mercury level when the temperature of this solution increases? So I guess when you get hot, the mercury expands. No? Mm. So volume, no? but do we measure the volume? How to calculate volume is? I R square something. Length. No, 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 no. Too, too much fun. We just want to stick the thermometer in the mouth and see the reading. Oh, we just measure a length. La. If we stick it in the uniform tube, then volume will be proportional to length. Hmm. So the so property can... here is length, kind of. Mm. Volume. The length, length. length of the mercury column. So the idea of temperature causing expansion. Okay. So the thermometric substance here is the material that is responding to temperature. In this case, it's mercury. And whenever we measure temperature, right, we are assuming that there is thermal equilibrium between the thermometric, proper, prop, thermometric substance and the thing that you are measuring. So normally, you have to wait for a bit. Right? You have to wait for it. Hmm. So like, say, if I stick this in a container of hot water, Mm. The water's heat have to go to the glass and then the glass go to the mercury. 
Yes. Wow, so many things. Okay, like, it might take, it won't be instant change, lah, which is why they say, doctors say, put inside your mouth, okay, wait for 30 seconds, then only eat. Mm-mm. Between the substance and the measured body. Okay. Okay. What else do we need to know about this? I think we need to know how to make the thermometer. Okay. How to make, Or, uh? or let's say, for example, you found a thermometer, But then because it's so old, the scales are all missing. They rub off and they cannot tell. So, cannot. so, so you see the thing go up, but you don't know what temperature you is. You don't know what the temperature is. Okay. okay. So um, our temperature scale, or last time the olden people, when they make thermometer, right? There's no, they don't know. Ma. Maybe I send to this glass blower down the street. They blow the capillary tube for me. The diameter is this big. And then I send it, and then my friend go to another village across the street and blow another glass thermometer, and then the diameter is different. So everybody <laughs> thermometer different. Like. Then how? Cannot say oh. that this length must be that temperature. Ma. So we need to do empirical, to use an empirical scale, la. meaning you need to calibrate your own thermometer at home. But don't worry, mm. it's easy to calibrate if you have water. Mm. And oh, ice. yes, fixed point. We talk about that. Ah, we yes. kind of know the fixed point of water. So maybe we stick the thermometer in ice like that one over there. We know it should be zero degree. Lah. Mm. So we measure this length. Uh, you see here, this length from here to here. So let's say this is L1. And we know here would be zero degree Celsius. Ice water. Mm. Then you take a marker pen, you draw on the glass tube. Zero degree. I think olden day no marker pen. Lah. Okay, okay. I whatever they, I don't know how they write Whatever that. they used to mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sharpie. <laughs> okay, then you take out the thermometer, then you stick inside boiling water, and you know boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay, very good. Then you watch the, watch the mercury or whatever go up. Then you draw another marker line. Okay, no marker. You make a mark and you call that 100 degrees Celsius. The mark here will be 100 degrees Celsius, and the mark here will be zero degrees Celsius. Then, like all good physics person, we plot a graph. Ah. What should we put on the axis? Let's see. So we are changing the temperature. So let's on the x-axis put temperature. Um, theta is a symbol we use for temperature now. So don't think of angles. Think of theta. One And can use T. They are not consistent. T. Mm, okay, T, la, T temperature, theta. Oh, mm, Y-axis, eh? put length. La, since that is what, that's the property that is changing. Yeah, and also your dependent variable. So maybe the length in cm. Okay. So you're going to get a probably somewhat of a straight line. At least we are assuming that it is straight. Lah. Which you can because the expansion of mercury is fairly uniform. That's why they choose mercury, right, Nis? <laughs> yes. Maybe you choose something else. I don't know. You'll get some weird expansion. So you're going to have one intercept there where your graph cuts the y-axis. That's where it's at freezing point. No? The water is zero degree. Okay, it's a certain length. Then you at 100 degrees, you also have another length that you recorded. And then you can use this to calibrate if you know it's a straight line, constant gradient. Oh, okay. And so, then we normally yeah. assume that we can extrapolate. Lah. So all this thing here is dotted line. No? So normally, especially in this chapter, especially if you see a straight line, you wonder why is it dotted here? We didn't conduct experiment until this high temperature. Why is it dotted here? We also didn't conduct experiment with a lower temperature. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Can, can. Okay, lah. so we got this one. You kind of use the gradient yeah. thing. No, so Then what, you so can what? chop up the whole scale, ma. chop into 100 yeah. divisions or something like that. There is an yeah. equation running around in most textbooks telling you how to use length to find the equi to, to find the temperature in between. But I just advise you, uh, use ratio, can uh? Don't memorize a new equation. There is no equation to memorize. All right. So what they will do is they will mark out the upper and lower fixed point, And in between 0 and 100, they will just draw all the intervals and make sure that the intervals are equally spaced. Can okay, you just divide us. Okay. Mm. Mm, okay. So that's our first thermometer. What's the name for it? Is there a proper name for this thing? Really say name Mercury inside glass. Ma. Okay. La, mercury inside glass. Okay. La, that's the name of this thing. I think uh, before we decide to sell the thermometer, <laughs> we need to know the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, like a pamphlet, okay? 
So what's the good thing about using a mercury thermometer? Hmm. Well, you already did the hard work of making the scale so you can just straight away look at the thermometer, you see the number that the mercury is at, then you know temperature. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to do it's already copy. calibrated for you. Yes. Uh mercury is also we choose mercury because it doesn't stick to glass, it's opaque. I add this in not because they asked before in past years, because it's good to know. Lah. Okay. Easily purified. And then it doesn't change. It wouldn't suddenly start boiling. Can you imagine <laughs> if the mercury in your thermometer start boiling as you measure boiling water? <laughs> and the whole mercury thermometer start vibrating. And then you go like, what? I'm going to read all the... this. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. The second yeah, that's a good thing. Mm. is your uniform expansion. That's the linear line that we saw. La. The length is very nice. Linear. So these two is the main strengths. But what are the weaknesses I will put red? Movement of liquid is jerky. Called jerky, I never stare at the mercury thermometer before. I mean, it's like... Tut, 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 I think because it depends on how much chemistry experiment you have done. La. If you're not taking chemistry, you totally don't understand this jerky. But I will share with you some frustration. La. I look and say, heat up the solution until 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, I'm very excited. I turn on the Bunsen burner. I stare at the mercury. So I stare at the mercury. So it goes from uh, 40 to 50 to 60 to 65, 66, 67, 68. I'm very happy going to come already. 68, 68, 68. I blink, 72. Huh? Why is it a knee jump? How can like that one? Ayo. The movement uh, is actually, it will it might stop for an unknown reason and then it just shoot up. It's a little bit like trying to measure the friction or the inclined plane. So I'm guessing, although it doesn't stick to glass, there's some form of friction between the mercury and, and the glass itself. So that slight friction actually like causes the movement to be a bit jerky. La. Okay, that's a bad point. What are the bad points? Glass bulb expand with right, oh, rising temperature. So as you get hotter, the whole <laughs> thermometer glass also get longer. So what is happening? So we tend to not use mercury in glass thermometer for very large temperature. So because this, and because the glass bulb will expand, this causes large error for high temperature readings. So if you want to measure the, the body temperature of a patient, if you're a doctor, you can use this thermometer. You are a school lab laboratory and then you want to conduct normal school lab experiment, thermometer is fine. You can measure up to 120 degrees Celsius. But anything more than that, things get a bit weird. Maybe you should write down a range. Normally, you use 0 to 100 thermometer for this one. Normally, normally 0 degrees. Under. Why you must know this is because sometimes they'll ask you to choose what thermometer is suitable? Usually the answer is not this one. La. <laughs> they like the other thermometers. But hey, it's good to know. When do you use this thermometer? You don't stick it in flaming hot lava. You don't stick it in some super cold freezer. No. There's a certain range roughly we use it. You can increase the higher range if you insert inert gas into the mercury column. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you need to know that. La. So it's roughly around 120 degrees Celsius. A regular thermometer. It's a regular one. Must be very expensive. Okay, I think that's all we need to know, right? For this one? Yes. Number two. Wow, what is this? Mm. What is the property of this thermometer picture? You take a look at what's happening. This looks like a YouTube from AS Physics. Uh. I mean, I can check out the name, right? What is it called? Constant volume gas. Constant volume gas. Ah, oh, so we hide some gas inside that section on the left side of the YouTube. I the gas the is uh. the gas is here, right? Mm. In fact, the gas is this whole thing. Yeah. So that gas, when you heat it up, it would expand, kind of like your mercury. But then, means the gas expand, man. Why not the gas expand? Constant Ooh. volume. Uh. We keep constant going. volume, the gas will expand, pressure increase. Mm. Mm. This one also, we will learn more in chapter 10, I think. So now, definitely, temperature will increase, right? Yeah, and then the, name, the gas. Yeah, but the name of the gas is called constant, constant volume. volume. Very good reminder. Yes. Mm. So, this is your manometer. Hopefully, you remember how it works from AS. <laughs> But what's going to change is that height H over there, your mercury will go up and down. Why? Well, 
because on one side of the YouTube, the right side got atmospheric or whatever pressure pressing down. I don't know. On the other side, you got the gas pressure there. So depending on how the pressure add up, you're going to have, or how the pressure changes rather, then the height will change. Yeah, this one is a little bit throwback to your... So what we'll do is we'll adjust the manometer such that the level here would be at the zero point. Throwback to AS, right? Once upon a time. Point A and point B have the same temperature. And temperature, pressure, temperature? Mm -hmm. So the pressure of the gas will be equal to pressure at B, which is atmosphere, plus, plus that height of cm mercury. So from here, uh, you there's actually an equation for us to calculate the temperature of the gas. If we know the number of moles and the volume of this container, we can actually use the temperature of the gas. But anyway, uh, let's say we map the thermometric property here, mm. which is pressure, let's say in Pascal, or kilopascal. Or mmHg. I don't know. Anything. Yeah, Pascal is nicer. Pascal is nicer. Mm, okay, Pascal. then axis temperature, right? That's what we change, yeah. ma. Yep. The water bath, you make it hot, then the thermometer has to change. Mm. So is this one linear, miss? Yes. You can just measure and see change of pressure, right? We assume it's ideal gas. Ah. Very nice. Can we go all the way until the x-axis, ah? Extrapolate the left side there. But, uh, um, Is can. that possible? Ooh. Ideal guess maybe can extrapolate all the way, huh? Uh, and, uh, I don't think as human as humankind we have ever reached this point. Experiment. <sighs> we have come very, very close uh, and created superconductors. But we use so much energy that it doesn't even justify getting ourselves there in the normal setting. So what is the lowest temperature possible where that intersection there where your gas does not have pressure? Theoretically, what would that be? Hmm. It's not moving anymore. No collision with the wall of the container. So no pressure. The lowest possible temperature. Well, I guess that's negative. Many, many negative. Negative 273.15 is actually the lowest. Do I need to know so many SF? Ah? Yes. Mm. We'll use this later when we learn about temperature scales. Yeah, and you see, uh, the thing about temperature scale is that <laughs> Kelvin one up the degree Celsius. Uh, he's like, this graph is so annoying. General equation y equal m x plus c cannot use ratio. Kelvin is my friend. He likes ratio too. Cannot use mm. ratio for this one. You see the c so kacau. So, so later he, he will get rid of the c. He makes his own scale, and I like him. Mm, okay. Creates own scale. Ha zero. Theta, Kelvin, yay. Basically, just shift the graph, la, okay? Yeah, la. You don't go make your own scale, okay? Miss, I actually think a lot of people went and make their own scale. Mm, if you go and Google la, how many temperature scales there are, it's quite interesting. We'll learn more about that in the next one. And we'll look at three temperature scales. But anyway, okay. Thank you, Kelvin, for changing the wine. Why does that? Okay, so what else do we need to know? The thermometric property, which is okay. the pressure. Pressure of the gas, Pascal's, whatever unit you want. So what, So the pressure is changing in response to the temperature. Okay. And then what do we put, what do we use as the thermometric substance? I guess the gas last. <laughs> what was I going to put inside there? Ideal gas, ideally, ideal gas. What kind of gas to use? I don't know. What is closest to ideal gas? Just throw some gas in. Oh, hydrogen. We tend to use the inert gases. Uh. And different gas will have different range where the reading is a bit more linear. Because let's be honest with each other, the gas aren't ideal. If you study chemistry, you will know this. There's bonding, there's some weird thing happening in between the particles and people don't know and then they get weird things. So this is the recommended range. Like, Do you need to know the recommended range? No, I just put here so that for fun, just for you to know. Nice thing is you can change the range. Oh, you just change the gas in the range. Change now. Yes. Not like the glass. Not like mercury, there. right? <laughs> <laughs> Cannot simply simply change the liquid. Okay. I, I, what's the worst thing about this this thermometer? No direct reading. Ah. 
you see, we did so much calculation, right? You got to do this. We need to measure the length and then you substitute, you need to convert uni, you need to measure a number of mole of gas. Very late, like, very tired. Okay, la, cannot, you cannot get the temperature by itself. But I guess... Hmm. You could build a circuit and connect to a moni- a computer and write a program to monitor this can. The changes in the temperature? La. Yes. So you can write a program. I'm pretty sure people do that in real life. La. But this is what I mean by no direct reading. La. You can't read directly from looking at the thermometer. You need to hook it up to an external circuit. Mm, okay. What other advantage or disadvantage? Number two, cannot be used to measure varying temperature. Mm, why? Uh? You see the bulb there? Round, round bulb, all the gas inside. Right? Gas take very long time to heat up or cool down. Mm. So you stick inside the water, then you slowly wait. La. <laughs> they are bad heat conductors. Mm, okay. Mm. So if something, if some temperature is changing very quickly, you won't see it. Number three. Whole bulb must be inside the term, it must be in thermal contact with the what they're measuring. So yeah, law, if your bulb, half of the bulb in the liquid, the other half is not, then something wrong already. Law. But I guess the nice thing is, like we mentioned, you can measure a wide range of temperature. You just change the gas. Uh, yeah, the gas pressure will change accordingly. So, And there's high accuracy. Mm-hmm. Because we are quite certain of the behaviors of these gases. In fact, although just now I mentioned that it is not ideal, there are other calculations that you can do to make to compensate for the fact that it's not ideal. Interested? Study more chemistry. Mm, or ask your friends who take chemistry. Yeah. Okay. Is that all we need to know for this one? Yes. So generally, we use this in settings where we always want the thing to be at the same temperature. And if got small change, we want to know ASAP. Although the thermometer is a bit slow. But okay, ASAP. Yeah, we want to know. We want to know like, if there's change and adjust accordingly to maintain temperature. So if let's say you are very extra and you're like, I must take a water bath every night at exactly 34 degrees Celsius water. Ah, okay, la, you make this one for yourself. La, you put inside your bathtub. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can also. <sighs> All right. That's number two. Number three. The second last one. What is this miss? Got so cute. Look like potential meter. Oh my goodness. Nani? Well... If you guess potential meter, you see the jockey there, it's correct. Oh. It's called a resistor thermometer, also known as platinum wire thermometer. I don't know why we use platinum. But anyway, it's a wire resistance. Ah. Like what you all do in labs, you put the wire there, you poke the thing here, you take reading. Okay. Because we, we know that resistance changes with temperature, right? Mm. So higher resistance generally means higher temperature of the wire. Mm. Your filament lamp, all these things. So R increase when temperature increase. Yep. Remember your IV characteristic graph? <laughs> From AS. Uh, yes, a lot of AS here, miss. <laughs> okay, okay. Chapters. What's the thermometric ma- material uh, substance then? I guess it's the wire, because you're using the wire, you're measuring the resistance of the wire. So you're using the wire as your substance. Or yeah, and the thing thing. about this uh resistance of the wire is we have no way to reliably measure the resistance of the wire. That's why we use a potential divider circuit or a bridge circuit. So what we are actually measuring is we use the balance length. Again, good news for you. They won't ask you to apply the circuit principles to calculate the resistance. Next to AS, that one you want to do, uh, you go AS chapter 20, you find that. This one here, no more calculation. Maybe. They assume you kind of know what it is. Yeah. So this is the circuit drawing law. And you adjust the position of the jockey until you get zero reading. Miss, which one is the wire? Where is the wire yeah. that is measuring the temperature? So many wire. How I know which one is the wire? Okay, I draw rainbow color. The wire is wound around this this thing, lah. Mm, so that one is the wire which you're going to put in. I don't know the liquid, the solid, the ah, yeah, whatever. Actually, lah. this is this is the probe, lah. This is the wire in real life. So if you zoom in, cool. you can see that the wire is here. But they space it out. So this one is actually a spacer. Okay? So you can see that there are grooves and then you round out the wire because the wire are not supposed to touch each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
and then this this thing we stick into thing the thing that you want to measure lah. I guess maybe something like this. Can I do a bunch of circuit stuff? Yeah, and then you adjust the potential meter. The potential meter is probably here or somewhere off the camera, such that your meter reading is zero. So if later you do some engineering or some higher level sciences, you'll be given proper stuff lah. But this one looks very cool lah. So please wear glove. <laughs> okay, so very good. How mm. to? Okay, so you know resistance. How are you going to measure the temperature? You calibrate ah, miss. I oh, resistance only is like ohm, ohm, ohm. Le, it's not temperature. You do a calibration curve. Hmm. Because we don't really think that this will be linear, right? I mean, we already look at IV curve. All this in AS, it's it's not linear. I mean, you cannot assume that it's linear. It may not be ohmic. So if you plot a graph of resistance against temperature like this, mm -hmm. it will probably be some kind of slightly curved line. Again, it really depends. But I guess you for platinum wire, it generally looks like a curve. Increase or decrease? I will say increase for this one. Increase, increase. Higher temperature, higher resistance. Increase with increasing gradient? Maybe increase with... What's the gradient? Ah? Increase with increasing gradient or increase with decreasing gradient? I guess it really depends on the type of wire. <laughs> this one was okay. <laughs> So uh, in, in commercial, right, of course, we don't sell this kind of thermometer in Mr. DIY. La. Cannot, la, cannot. Like, and you go and stab a chicken one. You want to bake something. I, uh, I, should show, I should screenshot this one. Although it looks so extra. Wow. Yes, <laughs> I'm very hungry. Me too. <laughs> okay, this one you see people use in cooking, cooking kind of thing one day. Ayo, this one looks a bit weird lah. But it's Photoshop in, but it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it will make sure you cook the best, perfect hot dog turkey roll. I don't know what this thing. Okay, anyway. so the digital one is connected to a circuit. Uh, the regular old person one, the one that we like to do, is connected to an analog meter. So you can see that there's an analog scale here, and then it will adjust. Mm -hmm. Okay, because okay. this one, the, it's contained inside the, this wire is contained inside. Everything is auto-adjusted already. Okay, okay, so anyway. Back to the graph. Yeah, so probably maybe something like this. Okay. The not good part is no direct reading. You read resistance, la, but then you're like, what <laughs> resistance is what temperature? No, you calibrate. Okay, mm. la, okay. La. So that's a problem. Unless you have a circuit in bill to calibrate for you, or uh, here there's also another. If you open this, there's another device inside here to calibrate for you one. The so that means one, you can do more things. Whereas for the mercury in glass, you don't need to do anything already. It's already there. You don't need another external circuit to help you read the temperature. Mm. Okay. Large range. Yeah, you, know, you see, yeah, this wire not big enough. You just throw away. You take another wire. Wind wrong the thing. Hey, eh, got ready. Not the commercial ones, ah, the lab ones. Commercial one, I don't need to do that. Convenient size. Oh, yes, you see, it's very cute. Well, this one looks a bit bulky, but... It it's more convenient than the constant volume gas. La. Yes, that one you need to have a glass bulb, mercury here, the pipe, the YouTube. tube. Okay, la. so kind of convenient. Quite sensitive. I mean, the moment your wire heats up, it changes resistance video. Yeah. And you can measure resistance quite accurately with your balance point kind of circuit. So, okay. Mm. And you can adjust the balance, you can adjust the potential divider circuit. Oh yes, you can adjust the sensitivity. If you know enough circuit, you know what I'm talking about. You can change the resistor in series with the wire. Then you get more sensitive balance lengths. Please, for steady readings only, uh, why? Cannot just put in something that change quickly, man, the temperature. When you change, you have to correspond by changing the balance length. So there will be a lag. <laughs> the temperature change, you're like, oh, yo, yo, find another balance point. And you yes. oh, okay. yeah. Change again, I will need to change again. Oh, yes, you cannot. Yeah. Even if you have a circuit to help you calibrate the balance point, it will take a while to respond. And sometimes if you want immediate reading, that 
that one or two second lag is the difference between whether your engine explode or not. Depends on how much you need a fast response. If you play games, you understand. How, is it important for this game to have a high latency? Low latency? Depends on oh, if you're playing a sniper yeah, game, then yes. If not, you should hear the fella run there already. <laughs> what are you doing? Your temperature change already, you measure something else. Ah, yo. Yeah. So if sometimes certain things, certain things we don't need, certain things we need. So it depends on the context. Okay. This is oh. number three. The final thermometer of the day. Hmm. What is this? It looks like a circuit also, eh? Thermocouple. Thermometer. Thermocouple. Sounds like chemistry. So how thermocouple works is based on chemistry. We measure the EMF produced across the junction of a thermocouple, right? Because these two metals that you have, uh, let's say this, you have this uh, copper and constantin, copper and constantin. If you touch them together, they will have some reaction one, then they exchange, re re exchange electron. And then you calculate the E0 cell by writing two half equations. You take chemistry, you know what I'm talking about. And you memorize the electrochemical series. So if I choose copper and copper, nothing happened. There must be different metal. Hey Ma, I, I, I don't have to exchange electron with you because we, we have the same, we are on the same position on the electrochemical series. Okay. okay. So Do if you know? don't know chemistry or you didn't take chemistry, if your fourth subject is not chemistry, then you just have to take it as a fact. Well. You have two metals. Different position on the electrochemical series. So that is, this thermometer is basically chemistry. Yeah. So already we don't call to... a thermocouple, right? Thermocouple, yeah, we already call it a thermocouple. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know the whole circuit, I just need to know that two different metals touched. And then they have an EMF. It's also how your 1.5 volt battery works. So different temperature will produce different EMF. Okay. Can. And uh, again, just for your knowledge, different range, we put different wire or can change the wire. Okay. So that's the main thing you need to know. Lor. Hmm, measurement junction look very small. Oh, man. We'll look at the advantages and disadvantages later. But also, so need to calibrate, right? Because mm -hmm. you're measuring EMF. How do you know what two volts is? You don't know what temperature. So... Calibration curve. Ta -da. It might not even have uh be like this, you know. Some of the calibration curve I've seen will look like this one. <laughs> I don't know what happened oh, so here. <laughs> it really depends. This is a rough shape, okay. Roughly, roughly. Yeah. Normally very small midi vote. So next. Advantages, disadvantages. What are some good things and bad things? The first one. Direct reading, fast reaction time. Mm, can change very fast to the resistor thermometer. Mm. So straight away the temperature change. Oh, you read already. Oh. Okay, very good. What, what else? What else? Measure small changes and it's very sensitive. Huh? So it's quite similar to the resistor thermometer. Also small size and portable. Whatever that we can make into a circuit, right? Humankind has been able to make circuits stupidly small. Like your phone, no? Very, you, you, I know la, in your lab, it looks very big. <laughs> That's because you wires everywhere. <laughs> but <laughs> in real life, the circuits are really teeny tiny. Come on, guys. Think about your camera. Think about your smartwatch. Yes, circuits are your, very, very else. small now. We can make circuits pretty small. So all this can be very small one. Don't, don't because we draw a very big diagram, you think, oh, it must be very bulky and I need a meter long wire. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, so any other advantages from the list? Yeah. I think oh, that's all right. Everything mm. else is disadvantages already. So one disadvantage you can see there is the calibration law. I have to calibrate. Mm. EMF temperature, non-linear, have to calibrate. Calibration curve, you draw. Ah, once you get the curve, then okay. Now, no. Hey, go one more thermometer. What is this? Oh, oh. so familiar. <laughs> I see this every day. <sighs> you all know what this one is, right? You go, teet. So question for you is, you see this gun thermometer, right? Which okay. kind of principle do you think it uses to measure temperature? Oh, what's the thermometric property, right? Mm. Is it any of the above that we have talked about? Did they stick something at your head to touch your head? Did they... Oh, don't have all. 
Mm, is the resistance change? I don't know. What is it measuring? From far away also, it can measure you one. Uh. It's quite interesting. Means the MCKL one, no? Same. Uh. I would think so. You don't stick your head on the thing to measure. You just stand there, it t- measure already. What magic is this? I, I, I cannot imagine if we all stick our head on... <laughs> Well, so the thing is, you don't need thermal contact for this thing to work. So it's not exactly heat transfer. It's something completely different already. Yeah, so we don't need a substance. There is no substance. This is a magical thermometer. You don't need to know this in A2, but maybe in the future you do. Anyway, you'll see this in quantum physics later chapter. But the thermal property here is wavelength. Wavelength, right? Yes. So did you know, fun fact... That you are actually glowing. You are releasing. Oh, Miss, thank you. Huh? My skincare <laughs> is very on point uh, today. So that's how, have you ever seen like Animal Geographic, National Geographic? They will say the snake see infrared so they can see in the dark, dark thing. They also can see, oh, there got human, I go and bite or whatever. Lah. So you are actually glowing because you have some temperature. The hotter your temperature, the brighter you glow. So you see the metal there glowing red. You don't go and touch. Lah. It means it's very hot. So, of course, we are not as hot as that. But generally, you see these thermometers down here is roughly how, um, what is the wavelength when you are at a certain temperature. Mm-hmm. So, your temperature is what? 37? Oh, 37 fever already. Okay, la, 37 yeah. degrees in fever already. Look at this, miss. Mm, end of sauna. Wow, you know what a sauna is, right? You go to a hot room, you sit there. So... <laughs> At the beginning, you see very blue means very low temperature. Then suddenly you go there, wow, red, red means these are all the places where you are glowing brighter mm. with a different wavelength. If we measure your the wavelength that comes out from the infrared, you yeah, see, temperature, we can find the temperature. So stay tuned. Or go and Google more electromagnetic wave spectrum. This is again, once again, throwback to AS EM spectrum. Okay. Yeah. And... Just to show you some pictures, this is the portable thermocouple. Your different metals are here. You can stab it in two different things. The reference temperature is a bit like, let's say the black probe, I stab inside ice water. So I know ice water is zero degrees Celsius. Then the yellow probe, I stab it in somewhere else. And then this machine will auto calibrate for me to give me the temperature. So although we tell you, oh, we need to calibrate, ah, we headache, ah, but actually engineers have already designed circuits to auto calibrate for you they have done all the work you just need to stab it into the thing that you're supposed to measure okay so yeah. if you want to you can look at your notes uh, different ways to use the thermometer if it i find that this part what you need to know is not that much but the more you know it's easier to remember the types of thermometer 